Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode three of The Owl House. Uh, so, yeah, our first two episodes kind of mixed for me. The first episode was just kind of okay, nothing special. Dog is making weird noises. Well, the second episode uh, was great and did pretty much everything right that it needed to. Um, so I'm hoping we continue to go in the direction more of the second episode, honestly. Though I don't expect every episode to be, like, amazing or anything. Like, even with Gravity Falls, which, again, this show has been compared to by fans. Um, partially, I guess, because Alex Hirsch is in it. <laughs> um, even with Gravity Falls, there are some episodes that just aren't as good. Like the Boss Mabel episode, not really that good, not really that funny. Um... But, either way, I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm hoping we get something good. Now, we have a lot of questions based on the opening and ending uh, clips and stuff. Um, like the outro, for example, shows these other kids who seem to also have pointed ears. Like, uh... oh my gosh, what the fuck is her name? The Witch. <laughs> I, I can't think of her name. I'll get it eventually. It's like Ida or something like that. But she has pointed ears. We know she's not human. Um, so I assume that these kids we see at the uh, in the outro aren't either. Now, we also have uh, a lot of possibility with this show. Because... As I stated last time, we still have the fact that uh, Luz is supposed to be at summer camp. And I still feel like they need to address that sooner rather than later. Because I just feel like it would not only, not even just be a big missed opportunity if they didn't, but it would actually be a glaring plot hole if they didn't address it. Because um, any self-respecting summer camp would make that call right away if one of the kids on their roster never showed up. They would make that call right away and say, like, oh, like, in this case, Luz didn't show up. Um, did something happen? Yada yada. And, of course, that would get Luz's mother worried. And that would get her to contact Luz. And again, we saw the hints leading to something like this in the first ep at the end of the first episode when Luz uh, texted her mother, which she apparently can still do. So I assume she could probably call, call her as well. Um, so I just feel like this needs to be addressed because, again, this wouldn't be something that would wait, that would be held off. And by having... By having Luz's mother kind of be brought into things, it would help the overall message of this show. Of, like, being comfortable in your weirdness and being okay to be yourself and stuff like that. I've, I've already talked about this plenty, but still. I feel like it would... It, it's pretty much necessary. But I'm worried that they might not do it. Or at the very least, won't do it till near the end of the season, which again would still be a huge mistake because it would just it would be too late at that point. It'd be like I think I've used this example for other things lately, but it'd be like in Little Witch Academia, where the audience was clued into Ursula being Shiny Chariot pretty much from the beginning of the series, and not revealing it to Akko or pretty much anyone, until the very end. And the problem with that is they kept throwing it in our faces over and over again that, yes, Ursula is Shiny Cherry, and they kept, like, pushing it into our faces, like, making sure we knew. And it's like, the fact that they then held off until pretty much the end of the series to reveal it to the characters 
felt really poorly paced and off, and it felt like it was just too late for that kind of thing. Granted, as I've also said before, they made it work. Um, that they, they had a reason why it wasn't revealed before that. That doesn't make it good, though. That doesn't make it a good decision. It just means that they made it work. But yeah, I really think that they need to get to this sooner rather than later. And it wouldn't necessarily even need to interfere with anything else. Like, it, it wouldn't need to interfere with Luz being there and studying under the witch. Like, that could still happen. That could be still go almost pretty much uninterrupted. Like, basically just have uh, her mother find out, like, get the call. Then try to text or call Luz, uh, like, ask, like, saying in a text or whatnot, like, where are you? What's going on? Are you okay? Stuff like that. Luz is ignoring her because she doesn't want to say anything because her mother has kind of voiced her opinion on this kind of stuff, basically. At least in Luz's mind. So... Luz doesn't say anything in response, and that gets her mother more worried, so her mother ends up starting to look for her and stumbles upon the uh, doorway to this world. Or a doorway. There might be more than one. We don't know. Um, and eventually, maybe she even ends up getting caught by the bad guys, and Luz has to save her. There's so many ways that this could work. And I'm just so worried about it at this point because this, again, it needs to be addressed. It's not even like, oh, it should be. It needs to be. I don't know. Maybe it just, that kind of thing is like, it, it's a big deal for me because I, I see that as like a massive plot hole otherwise. And I just really want this show to succeed. I've had so many shows that I've checked out that I drop because I don't like. So many shows I check out that I end up just being disappointed by it. And I really want this one to succeed. I don't expect it to be like Carol on Tuesday where it's like, oh, this is my new favorite show of all time. <laughs> um, but I want it to succeed. I want it to be good. Like legitimately really good. I don't want to be disappointed like I was with Amphibia. I want this to be on the level of Gravity Falls or early Star Versus. Hell, just Star Versus basically up in, up until the end of Season 3. Everything before Season 4. <laughs> um, I want it to be something like that. Something that is just that legitimately good and something I can get that invested in. But with no clue of where this is heading, like, all we know right now is that Luz is training under the witch. That's really it. We don't know where this is going to go. We don't have anyone we can really assume to be a main villain. Like, because I doubt that Warden guy is going to be the main villain. Just doesn't seem important enough. Uh, we can see that Luz is going to be learning these lessons, not just, like, magic lessons, but lessons in life and how to, like, just view the world and everything. Like with last episode and learning not to be so trusting of people in this world. <laughs> um, oh, and by the way, someone pointed out that, uh, that the creature in the last episode, I don't remember, like, if it had a specific name. I think they were just referring to it by the name of the wizard. Um, but the guy, the, the guy who's, like, kind of like this angler fish type thing where he's like had these like tendrils out that had like the wizard and the other characters we had met in the episode on on them and he was controlling like it, like they were basically puppets that he was using to manipulate loose uh someone in the comments i don't remember who but said that it was reminiscent of kingfisher from bleach and it's like, yes, because the right when that was revealed, it's like, I knew I recognized that from something. I could not for the life of me think of what it was, though. 
and it was definitely Kingfisher. If you don't know, uh, Bleach has this character named Kingfisher. I think in the dub it was actually changed to Grand Fisher or something like that. Um, but the character, he's a hollow. He's one of the monsters of Bleach. Um, and basically he's this hollow that has the ability to like use this angler fish like lore on his head and that can disguise itself as a person. And when, and, and when Ichiko was a kid, the lore was shaped like this little girl and it lured, it was trying to lure Ichigo, I believe, but it ended up uh, catching Ichigo's mother and Kingfisher killed his mother and everything uh, that way. Kingfisher was also, I think, the first hollow we saw in the series. Uh, I believe uh, he also went after Orihime by using Orihime's brother as the lore. Um, and that uh, he was the hollow that Ichigo defeated. Like, when he first found out about all of this. If I remember right. It's been a long time since I've actually watched Bleach. <laughs> um, I, used to, I used to really like it, but it kind of went downhill, to be honest. Um, in my opinion, at least. <laughs> um, especially once it started uh, being a typical shonen anime by giving Ichigo every power under the sun. And uh, just changing lore. For the hell of it. But yeah. I'm not here to complain about Bleach. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like yes. this The creature from the last episode. Very reminiscent of Kingfisher. Might have even been a straight up reference. It's very possible. I mean we know a lot of these. Uh, shows these days. Have straight up taken influence. From a lot of anime. Um, Star Versus, for example, Darren Nefsi took a lot of influence from anime. She it, it admits it straight up. Um, Rebecca Sugar took a lot of influence from anime for Steven Universe. We know that as well. That's been confirmed. And I'm sure it's the same with a lot of shows. And that's completely fine. That's great. I think that's a good idea because anime, well, one, just being so diverse and interesting can have a lot of different themes and ideas that a lot of Western animators don't always consider, don't always think about <coughs> for their shows. So by having a lot of these um, show creators and animators and whatnot being fans of anime, it allows them to come up with even more interesting, unique, and expressive ideas that allow their shows to become, well, unique and expressive in their own rights. So yeah, I just, I, I, I really think that it could possibly be. I'm not saying it is, but it could possibly be. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see the connection there. Um, God, it's been so long since I've actually watched Bleach. <laughs> um, I did like it for what I did watch. I did like it. I did like the characters. I do know how it ends, by the way. I, I do know how the series ends and everything, and uh, that uh, Ichigo and Orihime get together, Renji and Rukia, which are the better pairings. I know a lot of people were upset that uh, Ichigo and Rukia didn't get together, but it's like they, it was very clear they were never going to. <laughs> like, even a more casual viewer like me could tell that. Like, it was very clear from the very beginning that he was meant to end up with Orihime. It's the same thing with uh, Naruto and Hinata. It was super clear from the very beginning. Like, that was, like, pretty much guaranteed. And people just... It wasn't their ship, so it's like they didn't accept it. <laughs> Even though all the evidence supported the what really happened. <laughs> uh, but again, not gonna get all the way into that. I'm already dragging these pre-thoughts on long enough. Um... So we're just going to get this started and hope for the best. I know nothing about this episode. I don't know where the series is going at all, to be honest. Um, I, I just, I can't even pretend to guess at this point. Um, but I am very excited to find out. I am excited to see what happens and what they do. 
And I'm hoping to get more fun shenanigans with uh, the witch, with Luz, with King. Uh, meet all kinds of new characters to love. And again, I really, really hope that sooner rather than later they do get to the entire thing with Luz's mother. Because I think it's necessary. I, I think that we, we just can't hold off on that for too long. Otherwise, it'll just make no logical sense. <laughs> like, let's be honest. If they tried to do that kind of thing, like have the summer camp call and everything at the end of the season, it would make no logical sense. The only thing that would ever make that work is if they revealed that this world uh, ran differently in terms of time. And that, like, very little time is actually passed in the real world. But that would also kind of conflict with uh, Luz's text message, which also should have probably worried her mother anyway, if that were the case. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, either way, let's just get this going. <laughs> no more stalling. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, first off, I'm going to tilt this down a little. Yeah, that's better. Um, so this episode wasn't as good as the last one. But it was still good. I actually still really enjoyed this. Um, so we got to meet these uh, other children who are in the opening and the uh, outro of the series. Um, and they are students at the Magic Academy, which Ida is not a fan of. Because Ida believes magic to be something more free and wild and not something that should be taught in a, while a more controlled manner. Uh, but Luz is kind of unsure about things, un unsure about the way she's learning, so she uh, wants to go check it out. She ends up uh, overhearing a conversation uh, between Willow and Amity, um, where it's made very clear right from the beginning that Willow is skillful at plant magic, but apparently not at creating these... Uh, abominations. Um, and Amity seems like a character who I, I would compare to, and I know it's it's something that is kind of some, I, I feel like a lot of anime fans might make the comparison to, Diana Cavendish from Little Witch Academia. Someone who's not a bad person, who's not evil or anything, but someone who values their knowledge and position a great deal. Someone who, like, utilizes that in a way to become the best they can be. That's what Amity reads to me as. She's not a bad person necessarily, but she's definitely someone who, who values her position and her knowledge so much that she's willing to do anything to keep that even if it means to, in this case, rat out her fellow students and all. Now, we also meet Gus, who is apparently the president of a human appreciation club kind of thing. Um, and he's kind of the dorky, uh, cutesy one, almost. Um, just kind of being, like, fun and uh, adorkable about humans and the human, uh, uh, what's it called? How do I word it? <laughs> the human, uh, experience and ideas and aspects and all. Um, Willow herself is more along the lines of the nice, charming, just really just instantly likable character. Like, I, I, if, again, going with the Little Witch Academia comparison, if I were to compare her with anyone, it would probably be Latte. Um, I, I would say, I would compare her to Latte before anyone else. Um, and again, Amity would definitely be Diana. 
Um, I don't know who I would pick, compare Gus to, though. I mean, because Gus's human uh, fanaticism is kind of reminiscent of Latte's fanaticism over uh, that book series she loves. But it's like, otherwise, I just can't think of a character she, that he would really relate to or connect with in terms of Little Witch Academia. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just can't think of anything. Um, so these, at least Gus and Willow, for the time being, are going to be Luz's new friends. Um, while Luz herself isn't allowed back at the Academy, they can come uh, and teach her there, as they put it. Although, she's more willing to listen to and acknowledge uh, Ida's teachings now. Um, but yeah, it's like, so we got some new fun characters uh, who will kind of add a new dynamic for Luz other than just interacting with Ida and King all the time. I don't necessarily expect them to be in every episode, but I, I feel like they're going to be there often enough. Um, oh, 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 oh my, excuse me. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there was some other interesting stuff in the Academy uh, part of this episode, such as the principal. Like, what the hell was he wearing on his head? What was that little demon thing he had on his head? That was ridiculous. Um, and then there's the teacher who's like this little, like, weird beaked goblin dude who is just constantly being carried around by his abomination, which is like, what even? Um, but the big thing about the Academy portion of this episode I want to talk about is the obvious discussion on schooling. Um... I mean, there's obviously the stuff Ida said regarding, like, uh, how, basically how she was saying everything is, like, standardized in a way, which is how a lot of schools, especially here in America, are. Um, we go by the standardized core teaching method, which unfortunately is extremely harmful to a good portion of students, especially those who have learning disabilities, who can't learn the same way as other students. And unfortunately, that's more and more common than ever, and definitely more realized than ever. Um, so it's like we're, we're starting to come to realize that these standardized teaching methods don't work as they're intended, and that they shouldn't be used. So there, there was kind of a good, uh, like, slight commentary in this episode on that. But there is also the aspect of just um, unimportance in, in the lessons. In a lot of schools, again, especially here in America, I don't know about how exactly everything's done in other countries, so I can't properly say. But at least here in America, a lot of times uh, the schools, in fact, I'd say almost all the time, they focus on things that aren't important and honestly, most people are never going to use, such as, like, more advanced maths and stuff. Like, sure, math to, an, to a degree is important, and yes, you are going to use math in general in mostly everyday life. But, like, certain advanced maths and stuff, you'll never use. You'll never, you'll pretty much never use algebra, for example. Like, on, the, on a rare occasion, you might use it, or you might use something or something slight from it, but for the most part, you'll never use algebra because it doesn't apply to everyday, regular life. It just doesn't. Like, honestly, elementary math is all you really need. Like, just the basics of math is all you really need. You, you Basically, you need to know addition, subtraction, division, multiplication... You, uh, to a smaller degree, percentages and stuffs and measurements. But it's like, for the most part, you don't need to know all the more advanced stuff. And they also focus so heavily on just other stuff like sciences and whatnot that most people will never need to know. And it, it, like no one ever u uses it after school. It's like they learn it and then it's just kind of like wasted. 
And it's kind of, there's kind of a commentary in this episode about that in regards to how students are often put into like learning situations that don't benefit them while their educators and whatnot and parents in some degrees will um, ignore what they actually are good at learning. In this case, they use that uh, with Willow, who is put into this um, this abomination track, seemingly against her will, when what she's really good at is plant magic, which she's, apparently, if you're not in that track, you're technically not allowed to perform it. Um, and it's kind of a play on, on, on that idea that... Uh, she's being forced to learn about, study, and perform in this kind of education system that doesn't, like, cater to her. And some people will say, oh, well, it shouldn't cater to, a spe to specific people, and that's honestly false. That's the problem with our education system. That's why it's so fucked up. That's why so many people are having problems in school, and why there's so many people in in the modern world who just can't get by properly because they don't learn the things they need to and it's like this girl this poor girl is like forced into this track has no idea what she's doing and is failing and she's being the one blamed for it. and that's very realistic because, and they don't do anything to change that or help that because they see her as the failure rather than their own decisions here. And at least at the end here, we see that her, her using her plant magic allowed her to be transferred to the right track to actually be able to do something useful here, you know? To be able to perform well in the school on the track she should have been in from the beginning. And it's, it's, it's nice to see that, but at the same time, it's unfortunately not realistic. Because again, in, in reality, like, you'll just be blamed for it. The kids will be like, oh, you should have studied harder, or like, you're not uh, taking this seriously enough. And that's not, the, that's not what's going on at all in almost all of these situations. <sighs> but the problem is that's how our school system is. And unfortunately, I really don't see it changing anytime soon. I really wish it would, but I don't think it will. And that's why kids are still going to continue to grow up not knowing how to live proper lives in a lot of ways. Not knowing essential life skills. Because they were not taught it, and instead were taught stuff like advanced maths that they'll never use. And it's really disappointing. It, it really is. Because, I mean, I, I'm definitely right there. I've been through that. I didn't do well in school. For the most part. Because it's stuff that I personally had trouble with. That I couldn't understand properly. And they just, they shifted the blame on me. I've had teachers straight up tell me to my face that it was my fault that I was failing. that I needed to study harder, that I needed to do the work better, as if I wasn't trying already. They acted like I, I didn't care when that wasn't the issue. And they refused to help me when I needed it. Not granted, all my teachers weren't like that. And the ones that were actually good teachers like those are classes that i did a lot better in 
But still, like, the point stands that I, I've had to face that myself and that it's really just kind of upsetting in a lot of ways. And there was something else I was going to say as well, and I can't remember it now. <laughs> uh, I hate when that happens. Um, but yeah, it's like, oh, um, there's a quote often attributed to Albert Einstein, and I don't 100% know if it's a real quote of his or if it's just like, you know, one of those internet things where there's just a random quote that was attributed to someone. Um, but it's like, uh, the quote basically goes, if you teach a fish or if you try to teach a fish to climb a tree, it'll, uh, spend its entire life thinking it's worthless. It's something like that. I don't, I might be a little off on the wording, but it's, that's the basic idea behind the quote. If you try to teach a fish to climb a tree, it'll spend its entire, what did I just do? It'll spend its entire life thinking it's worthless. And the idea is that you're, that these teaching methods, you're trying to teach people things that don't connect to them, that don't relate to them, that have no relevance to their lives. A lot of these kids are fish, and you're trying to teach them to climb a tree, even though there's no reason why they would need to know that. And it's like, that's very clear in this episode when you have Willow, again, who, she's an expert at plant magic, but you're trying to teach her this abomination magic, which she has no knowledge and no understanding of. And then blaming her for it and making her feel like she's worthless, like she's a failure. When in reality, it's your fault for putting her into that track. So it's like, yeah, I, I had thought of that as well. And I, I'm glad I remembered that before I finished talking about this episode. But real quick, I do want to cover the B plot. So Ida and King, uh, while at the trash slug, basically uh, they gather all the stuff and they end up making a deal um, because King thinks he can be a better teacher than Ida. So they make a deal and Ida gives uh, him one of the trash slug eggs and he has to raise it to be a minion, basically, to be his minion. Um, so he takes the challenge and starts training it with positive reinforcement while Ida is just trying to figure out where Luz ran off to. In the end, though, the trash slug ends up becoming, like, just completely, I guess you could say, enamored by the, uh, by the dog biscuits King was feeding it. And, um, when it realizes there are no more, kind of goes off the deep end and rages at, uh, King. And so King has to acknowledge that maybe he doesn't know what he's doing and get Ida's help. Ida does end up helping him. They shrink the slug with some salt. And that's when uh, Luz comes back in and everything. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about that real quick. It was a fun little B-plot. Didn't really have a lot of relevance other than, like I guess, some confidence uh, stuff related to Ida and King. Um, it, it just felt like it wasn't as important and just was kind of giving a reason for those two characters to be in the episode more than anything. Um, even though I don't really think they needed more of a reason <laughs> at that point. Like, they very easily could have just, uh, had those two at the beginning and the end of the episode and just focused a lot more on the school. But, yeah, whatever. It wasn't like, on unappealing or just hard to watch or anything. It was still enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, so this episode overall was good. It was very good, just not as good as the last episode. Um, but it does introduce to us new characters who we'll see going forth, and I'm definitely interested to see what the show does with them in the future. Um, we once again did not get any um, 
progression on the plot, though, with Luz's mother. We still haven't seen anything going on with that since episode one. And yeah, like I said, it's still starting to worry me. <laughs> um, funny enough, I, 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 when talking about this in my pre-thoughts, I did mention uh, Little Witch Academia. Now in the afterthoughts, I've mentioned Little Witch Academia comparing characters to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like um, just ignoring that part. I just, I, I feel like they need to get to that. Like, it's not even, again, like I said in the pre-thoughts, it's not even a should. They need to get to that. It's, it's just something that they can't keep putting off like this. And I'm really afraid they're going to, and it's going to really hurt the series if they do. We'll see, though. I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping. I don't know how long that this uh, series or season or whatever is going to last, though. So there's that that has to be taken into account, too. How many episodes is this? If it's going to be like 26 episodes or something, then it definitely... Well, either way, it should probably be before the halfway point when they bring that in. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We can only hope for the best at this point. But yeah, um, I'm enjoying it so far. We'll see where it goes uh, next time. Uh, for now, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of The Owl House. And yeah, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.